teachings of the religion, we live from that opioid. It's the opioid. It just feels good to just to claim a word. But it's better. Better when there's a demonstration of the word. Because that's the testimony. That's the works that good men will see your good works and glorify your father. That's why we don't have people knocking down doors. That's why we don't have the church overflowing. You know, we offset it sometimes and we get the smoke, the screens, and, the, you know, we dim the lights and we, we get a big old choir in front of us and we got all of the phylacteries of church and we can brand it. But I'm, not, I'm talking about the anointing, the presence of God, the yoke-destroying anointing. That can only come when there's a marriage most, a marriage, a word and spirit. Something that needs to be lived out, that can change your life. When you remove from that place. See, most of us, we, you know, we go back to our surroundings, it looks just like what, the way we left it. God brought you out of that surrounding so you can change things. And it first starts at home. So that you can go after it. Go after the message. Go after the sermon. Go after the desires that's on the inside of you, your destiny. It's supposed to be submitted to the vision that's in you. Or the vision you heard. I don't know if it made it to you yet, but the, the things you're hearing and being declared to you, you're supposed to be trying to impose that pattern on your environment. You get what I'm saying? That's your safe haven. It's supposed to be a representation of what's going on inside of you. Every day of the work, every day of the week, not just Sunday. God ain't just concerned about your Sunday. Hello? We choose to give him what we want. He ain't your God. He ain't Lord. He's an idol. I want to get to Genesis 35. I know it's hard to say. People are going to be like, what? Don't play with my God. I'm just trying to recalibrate you. Let you know. You're playing games with your God. I'm trying to take the game. Because most of us, we want, we want the benefits. We want the benefits. But we serve them part time. You don't get benefits part time. Come on, man. You got to get full time. You know that on your job. You go in there and tell them, I want full time benefits. <laughs> Well, Johnny, you look like you only work 28 hours. <laughs> what, if he was, what if he was an austere man? What if he was really like taking note on what you do? What, what if? I know we, we perfected the art of grace and mercy, though. We, you know, we put it on cruise control. But what if God actually did took note of your lifestyle? What would be the headline? What would he say? He want to wait till you get to see him. Huh? <laughs> to make some changes. I know. I know this is what you, this is not what you came here to do. But I'm trying to provoke you to love and good works. That's the thing that God has assigned for every believer from the foundations of the world. And the component that's in that ark is no longer just in that box. What's on the shoulders of the priest he's raising up in the earth today? There are priests in the earth today. And I'm not talking about the ones who go sit in the booth and confession. There's a priest that God is taking out of the dung hill, out of the dust of the earth, and he's putting honor on them. And they have a more sure word of prophecy. And they're standing bold with the truth. And it's, it will cost everything. When we shifted this ministry, we started losing folks. Some of y'all remember? At the Holiday Inn, when we didn't have no room. Get here, we had plenty of room. Mm -hmm. Then we got here, it got packed, and I shifted again, and it just decided to say, well, you know what? I'm sick. <laughs> Put my Baptist finger up there, I'm out. Mm -hmm. It's about what God wants to do, and not just do, but build. Mm -hmm. And you got to make sure you make room for it, because he's after something. And you have to be after what God is after. And that's the people in this image. But you can't reach that place if you won't move from your place. We won't. We should, though. So you never, we can't get, continue to carry the promise and never experience the blessing. Yeah. It's 
time to experience the blessing. Yeah. But too many of us won't remove ourselves. We prefer to sit on the banks of the Jordan and not cross over. I mean, how long are you going to sit on the banks of the Jordan and not cross over? But you can't cross over. You can't reach it until you remove your place. you got to remove from your place, not remove your place. Because my place is not like your place, and your place is not like my place. And God is visiting all of our places. Am I right? He's the author and the finisher of your faith, my faith. Right? His agenda is, his agenda is eternal. You don't get a chance to revive it. You can't come to the table and negotiate. You can't say, okay, God, it's too rough for me. I'm having a hard time. Don't you know what I'm going through? Uh, as long as I've been saved, I'm going to tell you a little mm -hmm. something. He never answered my tears. He never answered my fits. And I had enough. I, tantrums. I have never, God never said, oh, baby, just be okay. <laughs> Anybody ever heard? No. That's why we like to go to pastor churches. Churches that's pastoral. Because they'll tell you, oh, yeah, you can do it. You get all the underdog messages. <laughs> you can do it. Come on, Johnny. Come on. The apostles be like, man, come on. Pull your britches up. Put on your big boy pants. Put the boots on. Take the simulac off your lips. Get, get, get on the front lines. Stop sitting on the side. It's time to move, remove ourselves from that place. Stop apologizing for what the Father is calling you into. There's some things around us that has a voice. We gotta learn how to silence those voices because we won't move forward. Am I helping somebody? I know it. Because there is an expectation from the Father for us to finally get it. To grow up. <coughs> Tell your neighbor we gotta grow up. Yeah. I know. We just think that God did what he needed to do with us when we first got saved. I'm here to tell you. <coughs> Go to Philippians 3. God wants you to grow. In fact, if you don't grow, you won't remove your place. Juice here is going to help me out. I'm here to tell you there's some things that we need to live up to. Tell your neighbor there's some things you need to live up to. I don't care where you come from, where you've been, there's some things you need to live up to. Live up to. <coughs> so, Philippians 3 uh, 13. It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are what? Behind. What, what things are behind? So if we were to kind of overlay it with remove from that place and go after How I many know if you after something, some things are behind you? Right? There are some things that are behind us. There are some things in our past that don't fit us. Our future and our past are not synonymous. In fact, you can't hold your future and your past together in your hand. Remember we talked about that. They don't coexist. It can incentivize you. It can cause you to dream. But something there's some things that happen in our past that are useful. But we can't put our hands and look back, right? Any man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is what? Not fit for the kingdom. Luke 9 and 62. If I keep looking back, Thank God we have the analogy of a car. Right? There's two mirrors on our car. Y'all know that, right? There's a rear view mirror, and there's a mirror right in front of your face. And thank God the rear view mirror is smaller than the mirror we have in front of us. That glass is vast. And that's beautiful. But we don't live like that. We, our rearview mirror is twice the size. And 
they should be. But it, it says here, I count not myself that apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching what? Mm. Or going after those things which are before. There's some things that God has assigned to you before. Not only before you, but before time. There's some things that God said concerning Ephesians 2 and 10 says well, that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works that God beforehand ordained that we should walk in them. So there's some things that God ordained for us to walk out, not just walk in, but walk them out, right? From the foundations. And those, those are the things that we have to go after. There's some things that God has, all of us, that's universal. I mean, there's some universal stuff. God deals with us uh, generically, but then he deals with us specifically. But there are some things that he, he's given us universally. There's some things you need to be after, like peace, love, fruit of the Spirit. How I many know everybody should have some fruit? Right? I know we can kind of deviate a little bit and try to figure out the distinction between the gifts and the anointing, but we need those as well. Every believer should speak in tongues. Every believer has According to the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, he has divided severally to every man gifts. There are some things that we should be after. We should be more in tune with the spiritual realm than where we come from, than the sociological and the sociological things. The warfare, they want to make sure that we don't get too big. You know, they want to keep us vacillating between our past and our future. And you got to tell yourself, you got to count it as dumb sometimes. Amen? Mm -hmm. You can't keep looking back. You got to make up your mind that my future is greater than my past. Amen? Amen? Amen. You got to let go of some things that are no longer pertinent for your growth. Amen. There's some things that you have to attain to. You have to migrate out of some old ways of thinking. We can't stay where we used to be. Mm -hmm. Every time God would do something with anybody, he was bringing them to another level of understanding. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing us to another level of understanding. Mm -hmm. You done maxed out. I don't know if you know that. I'm going to tell you right now. Mm -hmm. Most of your frustration, you maxed out of that level. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to create new growth. You're trying to change us around you. You're trying to get the... You're just trying to get things in your favor. 